Now at 11, Hurricane Matthew may have passed, but the suffering it brought is far from over. Communities along our coast are coping with massive devastation amid widespread flooding as residents brace for swollen rivers to top their banks this week. Plus, with just 28 days left until election, Donald Trump is hitting back at the GOP. The latest on the Republican infighting and what the impact might be on the election. John. Yeah, the weather, beautiful fall weather. We'll tell you how long it lasts. ABC Columbia News at 11 starts right now. Live from Maine and Gervais, ABC Columbia News at 11. President Barack Obama declares 13 counties federal disaster areas after Hurricane Matthew pummeled South Carolina. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for ABC Columbia News at 11. I'm Alicia Barnes. I'm Ben Hoover. On your screen, you'll see the counties that took the brunt end of Matthew's wind and rain. That declaration allows Washington to reimburse local government, state agencies, some nonprofits, and electric cooperatives for expenses they incurred after the storm. Disaster aid is not currently available for individuals. 13 of the state's 250 dams are in danger of failing, and Governor Haley warns that's a number that could rise. The Little PD River is expected to crest in the next 48 hours and may not ease for days. Well, two days after Matthew swept up the South Carolina coast, a town of about 400 people was inundated with water. Now, Nichols remains underwater tonight and could be for the foreseeable future. Our Grace Joyle headed 120 miles northeast of Columbia for this story. An island Everything gone, but we here. made of water as far as the eye can see. I feel like I'm stranded. We took a boat from the water's edge, starting about a mile or so from downtown Nichols. The Lumber River has swelled to surround every building in this place. Nichols is a quiet community um, that has been known for speed traps. Today, it's... It's probably no longer there. The only speed traps in a boat, branches, exposed road, and cars. Everything that we've worked for for the past 10 years is gone. Everything's just gone. Some residents, like Rashika Pitts, were rescued Saturday. And I started to hyperventilate because I, I can't swim. The current was so strong, it overturned the boat she was riding in. I jumped and was holding on to the top of a tree on the treetops. That's how high the water was. The floodwaters rising in a matter of minutes. At least 110 people were pulled out Monday, bringing whatever they could hold with their hands. Losing everything in a, mo in a moment. Anthony Gamble has lived in Nichols all 50 years of his life. As long as I got my mom I and my, my sister and brother, I'll be all right and 43 years for Margaret Tart. When Hugo came, the water was around our house, but never came in. We're homeless. Home, for now, found in a Red Cross shelter in nearby Mullins, where Heather Connolly Grover is holding out hope. I have to, I have nothing else. Amid devastation, the people of Nichols are still standing. Clothes, shoes, TVs, cars can be bought over and over again, but our lives can't be replaced. And no loss of life reported so far. We gonna bounce back. With God's help, we gonna bounce back. We just ask for your prayers. Sir. Thank you. In Nichols, Grace Joyle, ABC Columbia News. And the water has receded a bit, but officials say it won't crest until later this week. Now, State Senator Kid Williams says that FEMA should be arriving in Marion County on Thursday. And if you joined us for ABC Columbia News at 6 this afternoon, then you saw Grace Joyle was here live in our studio just after she came from Nichols. And she just told us very candidly as to what she saw while she was out there. Uh, if you want to see that interview and more of her story, please log on to our website at abccolumbia.com. In the United States, at least 27 people died because of Matthew, most of whom were in North Carolina. And now some Riverside towns have a new warning. Beware of more flooding. Here's Mary Maloney. Parts of the East Coast underwater. In North Carolina, rescue teams desperately trying to reach families trapped by the flood. Came up slow, then all of a sudden it just hit. 
And when it hit, it hit hard. We was up till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning trying to figure out how to get out of here. Already hundreds are in shelters and thousands had to be rescued by boat, all because of Hurricane Matthew. It's the highest I've ever seen it and it's just, it's steadily rising. This truck abandoned on a road that looks more like a river. The water so high it touches street sides, some using boats to get around. Houses and businesses not spared. It's about 22 inches deep inside the store right now. Matthew took out this bridge. A jagged edge is the only thing left behind. For most of the week, North Carolina's major rivers are expected to be above the flood stage. The water may look calm, but the governor warns it can still be deadly. If we say the water's coming and we say do not drive through that water, we mean it. Do not go through water. We've had over 10 people killed as a result of that. I'm Mary Maloney reporting. A South Carolina officials say they are dealing with river flooding after Hurricane Matthew. Haley says the death toll from Hurricane Matthew remains at three. There are still more than 290,000 customers without power across the state. In regards to evacuees making their way home, Haley asked for patience as the roads become congested. At least for this part of it, we can pr prepare and be pre-positioned and know somewhat of a timeline of what's going to happen. But it doesn't make it any easier on those residents who are sitting underwater right now and just have seen all that they have damaged. So, yes, now we are moving from a hurricane event to a flood event. For many whose homes were damaged in the hurricane, the last thing they want to think about is insurance. But navigating that process can sometimes be difficult. We spoke with insurance expert economist Robert Hartwig, who says it is important to act fast. If you've had damage, whether you're a business or whether you're a homeowner, first thing you need to do is call your insurer. Second, you need to document your damage. So if you've had some damage to your roof, a tree has fallen on your home, or damage to a vehicle, the best way to document that is to take photographs. Don't throw anything out yet, and if you can, gather any receipts that you have. We've posted even more help on how to file an insurance claim on our website, abccolumbia.com. You'll find it under the headline for this story. And there are still some schools that will be closed tomorrow. Clarendon districts 1, 2, and 3, as well as Orangeburg districts 3, 4, and 5 will all be closed tomorrow. The schools in Bamberg and Lee counties are also closed. Sumter schools plan to be back in session except for Manchester Elementary School, which is still without power. It is unfortunate that this would even happen, but the State Department of Consumer Affairs wants you to be on the lookout for scams in the wake of the hurricane. If you're donating, the department says give to well-known charities, know where your money is going, and never give cash. Try to write a check or use a card so that you'll have a record of your giving. And staying with fraud, thousands of relief workers are on their way to our state, but not all of them are who they say they are. The South Carolina Emergency Management Division says that if you are approached by a relief worker, please ask for identification. They add that a legitimate relief worker will not ask for your personal information, such as your bank or social security number. And if you still feel that you are in an unsafe situation, please call 911 at any point. While we shoot for the stars, you can help some of our neighbors get back on their feet and back on the ground. The One SE Fund is collecting donations for victims of Hurricane Matthew. To donate, visit to the website that you see right there on your screen. You can also mail a check to that address that you see there on that site. And for another look at all this information, please click on our website at abccolumbia.com. Well, if you, uh, well, if folks are without power, and I know there are still some yeah. in our area without power, or if they're cleaning up from the storm, the weather has at least been a little bit helpful, not as hot. Yes, that is very true. Chief Meteorologist John Farley joins us live right now in the Weather Center with more. Hey, John. Yeah, but we have shifted gears completely. It is fall out there, clearly. Look at these numbers here. We're already, in some cases, low 50s and not far from the 40s already here. And overnight tonight, we're going to dip down about as chilly as we did last night, down close to the mid 40s. Some of the cool spots, maybe like 43-ish, something like that. So kind of a chilly, chilly night and a chilly start to the day. So here's a look. Getting the kids out the door in the morning, crisp again. Sweatshirts are in order.
Yeah, it's going to be a chilly start to the day, but tomorrow will be a lovely start to the fair. As you know, the state fair starts tomorrow, and here's a look at that forecast for you. A little bit of wind, sunny skies, temperatures will peak around 76 in the afternoon. By tomorrow evening, if you're out, you probably want to think about long sleeves, especially if you're going to stay late, uh, you know, by the time you get to 9, 10, 11, something like that, but a beautiful start to the fair. and. This fall weather is going to be with us for several days. We'll go over the specifics on numbers. And if there's any rain in the seven day, that's coming up in just a bit. All right, Richmond County deputies want to find a suspected sock thief. Deputies say back on September the 20th, the person that you see here walked into the Dollar General on Main Street in Eastover and stole numerous pairs of socks, then just walked out. Well, investigators say the socks totaled approximately $200. If you recognize this person, deputies want you to call Crime Stompers at 1 888 Crime SC. No decision in a Lexington County murder trial after day one of jury deliberations. Attorneys in the trial of Kieran Dennis presented their closing arguments earlier today. Dennis is accused in the 2014 stabbing death of Devon Capers outside of Cookout on West Main in Lexington. Where are you? Investigators say the stabbing took place after the Lexington Dutch Fork basketball game. Three men are accused in the murder of a man they met on Craigslist tonight. Calhoun County Sheriff says Shavas Smith is charged with murder. Darian Washington faces an accessory charge. And a third suspect, Asani Smith, is being treated for a gunshot wound. He's also charged with murder. The sheriff says the shooting took place after the men were involved in a fight at a truck stop on I-26 between Columbia and Orangeburg over an item advertised on the classified site. This happened Monday night. According to investigators, 22-year-old Brandon Boyd of Bowman died in that shooting. In a four-way contest, Hillary Clinton now leads Donald Trump by double digits. Now, a new NBC Wall Street Journal poll released today has a Democrat leading her Republican opponent 46 percent to 35 percent. That's an 11-point lead among likely voters. In a two-way race, Clinton's lead widens to 14 points, taking 52 percent over Trump's 38 percent. Now, very important to point out, the poll was taken before Sunday's debate, but after a 2005 videotape of Trump making lewd and aggressive comments about women became public. As for the third-party candidates, Libertarian Gary Johnson polled 9 percent, while Green Party candidate Jill Stein received 2 percent. John McCain says he may not vote for any of the current candidates. The former GOP presidential nominee says he may just write in Senator Lindsey Graham's name instead. The Arizona senator formally renounced his support for Donald Trump after the release of that tape in which Trump made vulgar remarks about sexually assaulting women. McCain and Graham have had a close relationship for many years, frequently teaming up on policy matters and making joint press appearances. All right, the Gamecocks are off this week, but you can still catch all of your college football highlights Saturday night on Gamecock Saturday night. This week's show kicks off following a full day of college football action, including NC State at Clemson, North Carolina at Miami, and Ohio State at Wisconsin. How about this? A father-daughter duo hit the jackpot during their first visit to Crater of Diamonds State Park in Arkansas. Dan and Lauren Frederick were there for less than an hour when they spotted a two-carat rock on the ground. The state park in Arkansas is the only diamond-producing site in the world where anyone can look for the gems and keep whatever they find. They nicknamed their find Lucky Diamond. No word on how much the stone might be worth, but I'd be willing to bet it's worth more than the 16 bucks they spent on admission. Wow. How cool. How cool. Yeah. Coming up, a new study is suggesting tonight Pokemon Go is better than fitness apps at getting users off the couch and walking. Plus, he's just 13, but a Florida teen has already made it to Sports Center. The amazing catch that caught the attention of ESPN. That's next. Hey guys, flu season right around the corner. We're going to tell you how you can get prepared free of charge when you join us for Good Morning Columbia starting at 5 a.m.